It is a fire that purifies us from our sinfulness. We learned that God's word is a hammer that smashes down strongholds. And we also learned that God's word is like a sword that can be used to defend us against the attacks of the enemy, can be used to attack the enemy as well. And it also cuts us open and reveals the intentions of our hearts. So those were more, I guess you'd say, negative things. They're, they actually have a positive uh, purpose, but they're sort of negative because it's talking about dealing with, with a sin in our lives. But the four pictures we're going to look at today talk about God's word, I guess in a little bit more positive way. Um, it's all good, of course. Uh, but uh, adding to the four that we talked about last week, we're going to notice today that God's word is seed. God's word is food, God's word is water, and God's word is light. These are four more pictures that the Bible gives itself, four pictures of the word of God in the scriptures that tell us a little bit about how God's word works in our lives for our well-being. God's word is seed, it's food, it's water, and it's light. So let's just take a look at these four beautiful pictures um, as we think about the eight pictures that I've found the scriptures that symbolize the word of God. So God's word is seed. God's word is seed. It's like seed. In 1 Peter 1, 23, it says, you've been born anew, not from perishable, but from imperishable seed through the living and abiding what? Word of God. There's a lot of scriptures, there's a lot of passages of scripture that compare the word of God to seed. And I think it's because it was a, an agrarian culture. It was a, a, a culture in, in the Middle East where most people grew their food so they could relate to the idea of putting seeds in the ground and, and growing crops and so it was a very common image. You can find it throughout the scriptures that God's word is compared to seed, seed being planted. Jesus, in his parable of the sower in Luke chapter 8, it's also in other gospels, um, he talked about a sower and he said, the sower went out to the seed and some of the seed fell on uh, the stony ground and some of it uh, fell on uh, shallow soil. Some of it was choked by uh, weeds, but some of it fell on good soil and, and grew a harvest. And you're probably familiar with this, with this passage, with this parable. And, and in that parable, Jesus says in, in Luke 8, uh, verse 11, he explains the meaning of the parable. And he says very clearly to his disciples, he says, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of of God. Well, how is seed like the word of God? You know, how does that work as an image, as a symbol, as a picture? Well, we know that seed has to be planted, right? Um, Pam and I have been doing a little bit of planting and Pam found some seeds that we've had for, I guess, years now. I don't know how many years we have these packages of seeds and I think they're still okay. We could still plant them thing is if they're still in the package nothing's going to grow right seeds have to be planted if you don't plant them you can't have a harvest in fact in one of the uh, prophets it says um is the seed still in your barn in other words why is the seed still in the barn it's supposed to be planted you can't have a harvest if you don't plant the seeds so we know seeds have to be planted seeds need to be nurtured once they're planted you know, I'm planting some seeds right now, and I have to make sure that they're nurtured, that they're watered. Um, I'm not using any fertilizer right now, but I bought some uh, fertilized potted soil. And Paul talks about that process uh, to the Corinthians when he talks about the Word of God and his ministry. And he says that um, I planted and others have watered, but God gets the increase. You, you see, so the word of God is like seed. It has to be planted. If it's not planted, you know, people reject the seed of God's word all the time. They don't let the word penetrate their hearts. It has to be planted and, and it needs to be nurtured so it can grow up. And it has to grow to produce something. You know, I'm planting some seeds, as I mentioned, on my balcony. 
And uh, I just did this the other day and about three or four times a day, I'm going out and looking at these pots to see if anything's sprouting up yet. And you know, the, the, the third one, that's from another time. Actually, that's part of a plant that I thought was dead and gone. I left it for the winter. I didn't even cover it up. And lo and behold, <laughs> new life came up, even though I, I left it for dead through the cold winter. But these other pots here, the big one and the blue one, I've just planted some seeds. I even planted some date seeds just to see what would happen and some flowers and some, um, some uh, vegetables. And I'm planting some more this week. But I've been going out there with anticipation, looking to see if there's anything. Um, because I should expect, you know, pretty soon there's going to be some sprouts coming up. That's the way it works. And that's the same as the word of God. Once the word of God is planted in your heart, it will produce. It will produce. That's, you know, that's uh, very specific to our calling as a church, the vine church. We are grafted into Christ. He is the vine. We are the branches. And we produce fruit because we get our life from him. Just like plants get their life from the soil. And of course, when uh, seeds grow up, especially if they're vegetable seeds, what happens? It gives us food. And that's the next picture. So God's word is like seed. God's word is not only seed, but God's word is Food. God's word is our food. And just like food, God's word helps us to grow stronger. You know, when we're babies, we need, uh, we need milk. But then when we get older, we, we need meat. Well, let's look at a couple verses first about God's word being food. And there's lots of verses in the Bible that say, that compare God's word to being food. Jeremiah said, your words are, were found and I ate them and your word became to me the gladness and joy of my heart. You know, ever, have you ever had a great meal? Um, some of you may know if you follow me on, on Facebook, I'm always taking pictures of the meals that I cook, at least the good meals, the ones that Pam likes or the ones that I think are good. And a lot of other friends uh, that I know post pictures and sometimes the pictures look so good. I'm like, wow, I wish I was there to eat that food right now. So there's something joyous about eating a good meal. And God's word is the best meal. It's the most satisfying meal. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 3, Ezekiel said, it, um, this is God speaking to Ezekiel, said, Son of man, feed your belly with this scroll. That's the word of God. <laughs> feed, feed your belly with this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. Now, I'm not advising that any of you should take your Bibles and literally eat them today, but we dine on the word of God in a spiritual sense. But, but in a vision, God told Ezekiel to eat a scroll, to eat the word of God. And it says, then I ate it and it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. I'd like to talk a little bit more about this sometime because even though God's word is sweet as honey, sometimes it disturbs us in Revelation uh, there's a verse there where John was told also to eat a scroll and it tasted like honey, but then it made his belly sour. It was sour in his belly because you know what? Sometimes the word of God hurts us. I talked about that last week about the sword. It cuts us. And, and, and sometimes the word of God, we may dine on it and it may seem sweet at first, but then when we realize, Hey, I'm not living according to what the Bible says, then it becomes sour to us. But that, that's good. We need that sourness sometimes. But as I was saying, when we um, dine on the word of God, at first, you know, when you first become a Christian, you start off with milk. First Peter 2, verse 2 says, like born babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So, you know, when you first become born again, you learn John 3, 16. You learn, you know, um, the basic plan of salvation. You, you learn some of the basics, but um, unfortunately, some Christians just stay drinking the milk. Now, milk is good for a baby. Babies are supposed to have milk, but eventually they move on to pablum and then to harder foods uh, um, because they need that to grow. And solid food is for adults. I love what it says in Hebrews chapter five, that solid food belongs to those who are of a full age. You know, for adults, solid food is for them who um, 
are able to handle it. And in, in other words, what the writer of Hebrews is saying there is that, and he does say, why are you still drinking the milk when you should be enjoying a great big huge burger like this of God's word? You need meat. You know, milk's good for babies. But, you know, if you are a Christian, if you've been a child of God for any length of time, you need to eat more of God's word. You, you know, what would happen if I just drank milk every day? I'd probably shrivel up. But uh, we, need, we need solid food. And God's word is like food. I like what William Griffith Thomas, the theologian, said. He said, the good word, or the good food rather, is the word of God, for as food builds up the tissues of the body, repairs waste, and preserves us in health, so the word of God is the complete food of the soul. Somebody was asking recently uh, on Facebook, um, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? I said pizza because pizza's got dairy, it's got vegetables, it could have vegetables, has meat, has bread. It's, it's kind of contains all the food groups. That was my answer. But you know, God's word is completely nutritious in every way. It covers everything that we need to grow and to be healthy. So God's word is, first of all, as we've learned today, it's seed. That seed is planted and it grows and it gives us food. God's word is seed. God's word is food. And then here's yet another picture of God's word. God's word is water. God's word is water. Have you ever been really thirsty? <laughs> well, God's word quenches that thirst. And God's word not only quenches our thirst, but it cleanses us. It, it washes us. Ephesians 5, 26 talks about this. It says that he might sanctify her. Who's her? It's the church. It's, it's you and it's me. That he might sanctify, that God might set us apart. How? Cleansing her by the washing of the water in the word. God's word has a cleansing effect. The more you uh, drink in God's word and the more you bathe yourself in the word of God, the cleaner you will become. In fact, God's word also has a cleansing effect even on society. When God's word diminishes, society becomes more unclean. <clears throat> By the way, that's why our society as a whole is becoming more unclean. That's why... Um, uh, abortion and immorality and other things are taking place in, in, in greater numbers because we have less of the word of God. When you've got more of the word of God in society, it has a cleansing effect. And God's word um, is recognized and it's honored. And uh, when it is honored, it brings um, cleanliness to any society. So water is very important to us, right? It's important for us to stay clean on the outside, but we also have to drink it to stay clean on the inside, to stay healthy. Water actually equals life. If you don't have water, I watered some plants today. One of them was really dry. I, I, I neglected it, and it's starting to show. It's starting to shrivel up, so I got the water, and I you know water is important. Along with oxygen, water is man's greatest need. You know. You can only live for about three or four days without water. Then you die. Water is essential. And so there's this picture in the scriptures of God's word being like water. And of course, Jesus promised himself as water. And he, he promises to quench our thirst in him. You know, we can drink freely of the water that Jesus gives us. He says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Well, how can you drink Jesus today? Well, of course, through the presence of his Holy Spirit, yes. But I submit to you by going to the word of God. You can go to the word of God and you can dine and you can drink and you can have water within you uh, because you're taking in the word of God. You can have water within you rising up, as Jesus said, like a spring, like a fountain, and you'll never have to be thirsty again. I don't like being really thirsty. I've, there are some times where, you know, I was caught somewhere without anything to drink. And man, it's not a good feeling. But we don't have to be thirsty. We can quench our thirst every single day by drinking freely of the word of God. So God's word is seed. It's food. 
it's water. And then one more picture that we have, God's word is light. God's word is a light. In fact, it says in Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. How is God's word like a light? Well, man, we could talk for hours about that. But just quickly to summarize two things about light, you know, light gives us clarity and light gives us direction. It does a lot more than that, of course. In fact, light gives us life. If the, if the sun stopped shining, we would die in a short time. So we need clarity, though. Light gives us clarity. Psalm 119, verse 130 says, The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. It gives us clarity. You know, there's a doctrine that theologians uh, use called the doctrine of illumination. That's a fancy word, illumination. All that means is a, light, a lighting of your mind when you read the word of God. Have you ever read the Word of God? Have you ever read the Bible and all of a sudden, wow, it's like a light bulb came on? You really understood what it was saying, not just um, as a matter of uh, doctrine, but you understood what it meant in your own life. You know, a light bulb came on. You know, a light came on. That's illumination. You know, light gives us clarity. You can, you can see where you're going, and you can understand and have discernment when there's light. If you want to have perspective on what's happening in the world today with the COVID-19 virus, read more of the word of God. You know, um, everybody's got a, an opinion about the COVID-19, you know, and about how to fix it or why it happened in the first place. And man, there's so many theories that'll make your head spin. But if you really want to understand what's happening in the world and what God has in mind, Read the Bible. The Bible will give us understanding. It'll give us wisdom. In fact, James says, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally, who gives generously. He gives us wisdom. And he does that as we read his word. The word also gives us direction. It gives us direction. It helps us to see where we're going. I want to ask you a question. Oops, I don't have it here. I, was, I had a slide. I must have uh, skipped it. Uh, it was um, just complete darkness. Have you ever been in complete darkness? Uh, years ago, my family, Pam and, and Rachel and Sarah and I, were down in West Virginia visiting a church down there. And they took us to, um, they took us to uh, uh, some caves. And we went inside these caves, and they turned out the lights. And so it was pitch black. And I kept waiting for eventually for me to be able to see something, but I never could. And they actually held, had us holding onto each other's hands because, man, you could not, I could not see my hand in front of my face. It was so pitch black in those caves. Then they turned on the lights and then we could continue moving through the caves. It was kind of scary. <laughs> it really is. Um, but uh, God's word gives us direction. His word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And once again, if we want to discern what's happening in the world around us, we need God's word to shed light. We need the word of God. That's what um, last week and, and, and today is all about, folks. I can't emphasize enough. If we ever needed God's word, we always have, but we really need it now more than ever. And so to sum up what we've been talking about last week, we talked about God's word reveals our flaws because it's a mirror. It's a looking glass. God's word purifies our sinfulness because it's like fire. Fire burns out the dross. It burns out the, the elements that shouldn't be there. God's word breaks through all strongholds because it's a hammer and it can smash just like the wall of Berlin uh, was smashed down. Remember that from last week? And God's word is like a sword that, that cuts through our sinfulness. We can defend ourselves, we can attack, but it also, it also is used to operate on us, to, to show us um, what needs to be changed on the inside. And then from today, we've learned that God's word is like a seed. It's like seed. It grows within us to yield fruit. And then it's like food. God's word is food. It strengthens and nourishes us. You know, how many days would you like to go without eating? You know, you can go maybe 30 or 40 days and then you're dead. But God's word, we need it every single day to stay nourished. And then God's word is like 
water that cleanses us, it refreshes us, it gives us life, and God's word is light. It helps us to see more clearly. So I'm going to uh, ask you to unmute yourself, and we're going to just have, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself because we're going to have just a little discussion time here. And I will start with this first question. Um, if you were to describe, here's the two questions, and then I'll take it off so we can see each other because I can only see three other people right now. If you were to describe God's word to you um, in a picture, if someone would ask you, what is God's word like? Not using the same eight that we looked at, but maybe another image. God's word is like what to me? And then we're going to ask you to list or we're going to make a list of how many ways we can share God's word this week. And I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to do more in sharing the word of God. So let me stop sharing the screen for right now. Ah.